Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Shintaro Higashi Show with Peter Yu. Today, we're going to talk about Senagi. Yeah, it's one of the most popular throws. Um, Super popular. It's aesthetically yeah. pleasing. Exactly. You know, okay. I think a lot of times when people think of judo, they a lot of times they think of Ippon Serenage, you know? Yeah. It's they like think about the arm iconic, throw. Arm right? throws, yeah. They're launching the guy over your back, guy or girl, right? Yeah. It's in Street Fighter. It's in every movie <laughs> ever made. Right. Yeah, so... It, this is a uh, you know another edition uh, edition of the uh, the judo throw episode. So we're gonna dedicate the whole episode about Serenaga. So let's yeah. get let's start with why you think what we think it's such an iconic throw in judo because it does uh, wrestlers use it too. The you know they call it arm throws yeah. or various throw. names, but if you yeah. especially if you watch freestyle or Greco Roman wrestling, yeah, they do this a lot. But why I mean, it depends it be, on where you're uh, from. You know what I mean? If you're yeah. doing a Russian style wrestling, there's a lot more throws, right? There's a lot yeah. more high amplitude throws because the United States has collegiate scholastic wrestling, folk style yeah. wrestling, even that they call it, right? Sometimes we call it collegiate scholastic folk style yeah. wrestling, which is different from freestyling Greco Roman wrestling. Those yeah. sports get more rewarded points for big throws, right? Big dynamic, right? So they're rewarded more for that. And right. collegiate wrestling, you don't get rewarded for that at all. You get the same two points unless you put them to their back. And you get back points, back points right? yeah. So based on the rule set and how many points you get rewarded, it changes how the wrestling actually looks like. Right, you know right. I mean? Collegiate wrestling is a lot more control-based because I think for insurance reasons too and safety reasons. Because yeah, you don't want a guy... Was, yeah, they modify yeah. it to be more safe, yeah. Yeah, they don't want to go belly-to-belly -belly suplex and then kid goes upside down and gets spiked on their head. They just don't yeah. want that, right? Mm. So they don't reward any points for it. They have potentially dangerous. If you lift them, you have to put them down safely. All this stuff discourages these kind of big throws. You know I mean? Right, right. Even in collegiate wrestling, they call Ipong Sanagi the Jap wizard. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a, short I know for that. the Japanese wizard. The wizard you know? Yeah, yeah. People used to say that. You know, uh, <laughs> and no problem. <laughs> yeah, Dude, how how racist does it sound? Right, I was very good at wrestling. This freshman in high yeah. school, I was already pretty good, and I was throwing every wall with Ipong Sanagi. And they used to say, "Freshman sensation, Shintaro Higashi, Jap wizards everyone." Ah. <laughs> Wait, yeah, on that, that, the local like newspaper? Real, yeah, that was like a real thing in the newspaper. I was like, wow, that's... <laughs> that's messed up. No, nah, yeah, the Japanese wizard, like they go, the Jap wizard. Yeah, well, I so guess funny. that's kind of, I mean, yeah, but, you know, besides the whole racist yeah. uh, name. Connotation to it. Connotation yeah. to it, but you can already see that they called uh, it the Japanese wizard because... Yeah. yeah. Pro probably from judo. Yeah, potentially, you know, wrestling ha definitely has been around longer, but you know, you can never, never deny like the influence that judo had on countries like Russia, who has yeah. sambo, which is a judo wrestling hybrid sport. Yeah, you know, that's their national sport. Right, right. right. And a lot so, of these MMA fighters yeah. that come from Dagestan and Kyrgyzstan and Belarus, those guys do more sambo than actual wrestling. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I shouldn't say Ru Russia. Russia probably has a big wrestling program. For them too. Yeah. I, I can't say like more sambo than wrestling. I shouldn't say that, but. Definitely they, a judo they, influence. Yeah, over there yeah. it's like a little flu, uh, like fluid too. Yeah, they like kind of do everything. All right, yeah. so so this is a bit about why the popularity behind Serenage. You know, it's kind it's of iconic beautiful. throw. So and, and the arc of the throw is you know yeah, it is huge. It goes huge. over. Yeah, yeah. You take the person. If you guys never looked up Koga highlights, K O G A, go do Koga highlights. He was the most spectacular. Senagi, I mean, mostly Ipon Senagi. Ipon and I'm Senagi, saying yeah. Ipon Senagi, Senagi interchangeably because yeah. they're very similar throws. They're both hand techniques. Yeah. Right? There's three types of throws, right? Hand techniques, hip techniques, foot techniques. Right. And then right. sacrifice techniques, but we don't want to disregard that for now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so not only is it popular, it seems like it is very, but also it's very effective in competition settings too like it's kind sure. of uh, maybe that's yeah. why it's it's one of the most popular throws it yeah. not only does it look good but also it look it is effective so what's the what in your opinion is behind its effectiveness well so you're throwing your whole body into it you know so yeah. there's a lot of uh turning like centripetal force fast twitch turning uh ripping yeah. the technique and then there's also a dropping component too right? So you could do it high or you could do a drop senagi Right. You know, or some people might say Seoi Otoshi. Yeah. Okay, shoulder drop. You know, um That's it, almost Reddit that, goes crazy. Yeah, with this it's one, almost right? uh, as popular as the Uchimata versus Hanegoshi argument. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh Seo Otoshi versus Drop Senagi, you know, it's just a different throw. 
But we're all bundling the Sayoi Nage thing. You yeah. know, I like to teach the kids it's called the backpack, though. You're putting on a backpack, right? Mm hmm. Whether it's like you hold the backpack like this or with one arm, right? It's a backpack though. You could do it high, you could do it low. And it, when you're doing it low, you could run your feet. It right? literally drive. Got, it literally yeah. means in Japanese like a piggyback throw, right? Yes. Yeah. Seo is like put on the back, you yeah, know? So yeah. it's considered like a lifting throw. Yeah. And uh, you know, you could put your legs into it. And you know, there's definitely a criticism of like if you miss it, you give up your back. Right? Yes. Yeah. But a lot of these judo throws there's that learning curve, you know, yes, you miss it, you go to your back, you give up your back, but if it's done really explosively, you know, with the right timing, with the right movement, with the right execution, the right finish, it's very, very effective. There's lots of ways to enter, lots of ways to finish, you know, so the combination mm. of that, you know, like the, how you set it up, you know, in conjunction with a lot of different backward techniques, right? So coaching, yeah. snap, moving, circling, cutting that angle, whipping them around your back. You go high Senagi, then you go low Senagi, you go Ipon Senagi with one handed, right? As you're losing, you go to the other side, like the weak side, you know? I'll yeah. tell you this, man. I was fighting Ariel Zevi. He was a European champ mm -hmm. from Israel back in the day. Mm -hmm. And he's a big, big, big dude. Yeah. You know, and he would come out as a righty and I would out grip him as a righty, which is nuts, right? Yeah. He's like so much bigger than me and stuff. Right. And then he would be like, oh no, I, I'm being out gripped. And he'll switch to this like really weak inside left and he'll like cower away. Yeah. And he would do a drop left Morte Sanagi. Oof. Yeah, and he caught me with that pretty good. And it was like, whoa, you know? He's tall, right-sided, high right hand, dominant, like right. big turn throw. You wouldn't expect that from him. And then he did like a very, you know... Sneaky left Sneaky side drop side. left, you know? And yeah. it was so, so nice. It was so good, you know? So like uh, a lot of different body types can do it. Yeah. Tall yeah, guys, yeah, short this, guys. A lot of people think that, you know, Sanagi is for... Usually for shorter people, but even heavyweight, I guess relatively speaking, they there'll be shorter people between heavyweights, but still, like it all, even tall people go for it. Oh know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Even like in a way, was very good at it. You know, yeah, he, he goes like high with Shimada, just, high with yeah. Shimada. He like as he's coming out, he drops and goes underneath. Yeah. You know? And this is the beauty of Sanai, right? Like just to kind of go with the question that you asked, why is it so effective? Morote Sanai, you have two hands on the collar. Right. And you're like pulling them towards you and then you're dropping underneath yeah, them yeah. and then using your hand to like run them, right? So mm -hmm. you're creating momentum forward. You're diving under their arms and their hips off balance and then you're going to drive them in the direction that you they have momentum. Yeah. And then you get to use your legs to run it, right? So right. it's a very effective throw. I hate, you know, the spamming drop Sanagi sort of guys do that. They just yeah. drop and drop and drop and try to force penalties, right? Like, hey, other person's pass it, pass it, yeah. pass it, like, Shido, Shido, right? But it's an art to it, you know? Yeah. There's reverse Korean Sanagi. Mm. That was a whole thing that's now banned. Sorry, Korea, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> there was, yeah, there was some crazy variation on it. But yeah, I think that yeah. the versatility and then the fact that it's so, it uses the whole body. It, it, you can really put everything behind it. So, you know, if you want to get yeah. a throw in, that's, that's a way to do it. You have to yeah. use the whole body yeah. and then yeah. actually using the, you know, you're, it is a hand throw, but I think the, the finish comes from your legs. So I guess you're using the biggest yeah. muscles yeah, it's, in it's your really body. It's really amazing, you know, yeah. based on the high low. So think of it this way, right? You got Morote Senagi, which you two hands, Ipon Senagi, which use one hand. You yeah. have the drop series of, you could do drop Morote, drop Ipon Senagi. Yeah. Okay. And then you got the cousins of those guys, which is Sode. Mm. You go Sode both ways. Right. So now you could enter Sony high to the left. You could go Ipon Senagi high to the weak side, left, right, brush, right. Mm. You could do the same techniques, drop to the left. You could do the same techniques to the right, right? I know. You could do it off wrong side collar and sleeve, right? Which is like the traditional Sode grip. Then you could do double sleeve, right? Like there's just so many different combinations. It's like, you know, and then you mix it, match it with Kochi or Ochi dude. You got like, you know, like 47 different yeah, yeah. techniques that are off as one you know, dropping under the person sort of a situation. Yeah. You know, and you could drop high, drop low. You could play with their feet on the inside of the legs, Kochi Ochi. Boy, does that, you know, right. really change the game, right? If you know how to use it properly. Yeah. So, yeah, that leads to the next question. How do you learn to use it properly? This is, is it, um, I think it's one of the first throws, like front throws you yeah. learn as a judo. Yeah. Yuka, but I feel like there's, it's not the easiest throw to learn as a beginner. 
you know, not as intuitive. Um, yes. So how how do you teach it nowadays? You know, how would you recommend people yeah. to learn, try to learn it? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think the biggest mistake is like they show the shape of the move. Hey, mm -hmm. facing each other upright, right versus right, collar sleeve. You open the hand, you drop on the knees, and then you bend yeah. your knees, and then you throw them over. I've never seen anyone throw anyone like that. <laughs> yeah. If you can't do that, you can't progress to the next stage, obviously. Right? right. But spending too much time doing a thousand inch economies, thousand two person inch economy, three person yeah. economy, that going, there's sort of like a diminishing point of diminishing return. returns. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You nailed it. Right. So I would say like contextually, like a lot of moving, which you call me, but like in combination, contextual. Mm. Right. So it's like, how do you free up this right hand? How do you free up this left hand? You know, if you guys want sort of visual how to on this, you could go to YouTube and type, Stay in Nagi, Shintaro Higashi. There's tons of resources out there for free. There is a Sanagi, drop Sanagi tutorial that you could purchase on yeah. shintarohigashi.com. But honestly, man, it's 10 bucks. Like, there's so much on YouTube for free. Just freaking watch that. You know what yeah. I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> he so goes like, in, yeah, he goes into, I, I watched it and he goes into yeah. a lot of details about, yeah. yeah. So, like, freeing up the sleeve, right? What are the yeah. main resistance points that you're going to get when you're trying to do this throw? Yeah. You know, if their hands high in the collar, then you can't turn the head. So you have mm -hmm. to address that, right? If they're pinning this elbow to your hip, then you can't turn in. So like you have to address that. How do you address it? You do these types of things, right? And generally, if you want to do those things and you're looking for those things, the other person knows you're looking for those things. So you have to do meaningful feints and threats mm -hmm. to destabilize. Them. Hey, I might try to do a say now, but I'm going to go coach you. And I kick the shit out of their leg, right? Like, yeah. How, you know? And then you free one arm and now you're able to drop on the knees, right? So it's like playing that game of like, hey, destabilizing your opponent's stance, moving them meaningfully and then attacking their feet mm -hmm. and then setting up the throw to where they don't see it coming, yeah. right? And the last bit of it is just the execution of actually doing the throw, which most people spend way too much time doing, mm. right? And then once they get in, there's the finish. How do you right. finish it based on what reaction? If they scoot their hips to the outside, you have to run it in a different way. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? And a lot of people just kind of drop and then do an ab curl oh, and hope oh, that yeah. they go over. That only works if the off balance was perfect and the timing was perfect and they're like hovering over you. Yeah. They're about to trip over you anyway. You know, it isn't the right finish. You know what I mean? Would you see guys doing that? Yes, because timing was perfect and now that's all they could do. But a lot of times timing is imperfect. They see it coming, yeah. they try to defend it. That's when you need to know how to drive forward and run it or switch to something else. Yeah. Somebody just did this to the, uh, uh, the world or something like this or the Grand Prix. You know, someone dropped in Nippon Saint oh, literally yeah, lifted, and then they stood up with the person and then dove forward and did a Oh, yeah, guy. I saw the throw. Beautiful. Super cool, right? Yeah. You guys got to go Judo Gallery on Instagram. It has like yeah, all, have... it's like their new IJF thing where they're taking yeah. clips from judotv.com, which is like another great thing that they're doing, showcasing judo. You can watch individual matches of all the major tournaments. Super professionally done. You know, <laughs> we, yeah, we talked about that uh, episode. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's sort of my tip. You know, you got to learn contextual drew, right? Yeah. You can't just learn the techniques. It's like boxing, right? You can't just learn how to jab and cross and hook yeah. and uppercut. And now all of a sudden you're a boxer. You know, right. how does it work with feints? How does it work with defensive maneuvers? How do you string together? How do you make the person think you're going to go for something? How do you manage distance? Right? Yeah. Grip fighting is a piece on this, right? Because if you're doing Ippon Sanagi, you have to have one hand on and then the other hand has to be free. You know, so how do you get to that position? There's right. many different ways to enter that sort of Ippon Sanagi precursor mo motions, you know, yeah. Yeah. that are very re requirements. You're going to learn all this stuff on my YouTube. The whole thing is my YouTube. Uh, like, yeah. like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. And the podcast too. So yes. now let's go into a little more like I guess it might be more uh, nuanced question. So, so I used to be a big serenage guy. Yeah. Like I used to spam that thing, like left, right, right, left, everywhere. Yeah. And because I and I would do the drop style because I'm I I yeah. rely heavily on my speed. And mm. now my knees are giving out. I can't do I can't do it as much anymore. So yeah. you know, I Shintaro knows that I've changed my style and whatnot. Yeah. But I feel like this is a common question, like a lot, and we talked about old guy judo too. People who start late, they can't do it as much. The drop techniques. Yeah. Any advice on this? Should they look for another throw, or is there something they can do? Is there something they can do to mitigate this issue? Yeah, I mean standing sanagi, which is much harder to hit, you know. Yeah. But 
everyone kind of puts it in their own head and they put limits on themselves by saying yeah. like, oh, I have to be really, really fast in order to do this. But majority of the time it has nothing to do with speed. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of the times it has something to do with, if I'm turning to my left over here, right? To a yeah. right side, Ipong said Agi, they bring that right leg back and bring it forward and then pivot off of that. You know, yeah. so you're taking yourself one step back, right? So having your right leg forward first and then pivoting, and like it's sort of like a, you know, split step Ipong said Agi, having right, that right. kind of a thing, right? Having the right setup for that, you know, having like that hand controlled and your hand beaten to the inside already and controlling that inside space mm -hmm. and then working it. You know, these kinds of things are very important, right? Because it kind of takes speed out of the factor, you know? I mean, it doesn't take it out, but it just shortens. Yeah, you don't, right? have, you don't need to be as nearly as fast. Yeah. yeah, because it just shortens the distance yeah. of the throw, you know? Yeah. So working on that, they can potentially help, you know, um, looking for a specific time. Like if you outgrip the person and then you have their sleeve and they're trying to cut that sleeve hand, cut that sleeve hand, like ripping it away, ripping it away. And then on the third try, like letting them rip the hand away, right? Mm -hmm. So now you have one hand on the collar. So now you can go throw it to the weak side, he called Senagi, as they're bringing that hand back to put their hand on the collar, you go right in, you know? So something like that, which is a little bit more nuanced, timing-based sort of a thing. You know what I mean? Or even like getting really, really good at Kochi Ochi. So Kochi Ochi, Kochi Ochi, like dragging him forward, make it look like Senagi, make it look like Senagi. So you're throwing, you're spamming feint. Yeah, yeah. Fate, right? And Takoto, I just saw a video of him doing Kochi on a little kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it's just like for fun. Or yeah, 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 yeah. But he's like moving this way, moving yeah, that way. Yeah. Looks like Kosoto. Looks like Senai. Looks like Kosoto. Looks like Uchimara. Uh, uh, what's coming? What's coming? And then he just tips him over with a coachy, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like that. You know, the more feints you throw in for Senai, the more reactions you could get, the better for the back throws. Ochi, coachy. Yeah. And once you start spamming those and hitting people with it, right? Now, every time you make it look like you're going to go for Senai, they're less likely to react. Right, right. And then maybe you could do it once or twice in the round, which kind of preserves your knees a little bit. You know yeah. what I mean? There's a big difference between doing saying I drop saying I 10 times in a round versus me doing it once or twice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, I went to Kano Martial Arts Open Mat. Oh, yeah. Right? My other Some dojo. videos, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, our friend was there, right? And he, uh, yeah. the Rondorian drop saying I was there, so I hit it once. Uh. The whole Open Mat, I hit drop saying I one time. You know what I mean? And so it was fine, you know? Right, your knee and my, fine. Yeah. yeah. And my left knee is the one that's bothering me now, the one I can't close all the way. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. So you could see in that video that my left knee extended away, right? So I'm not putting all my weight on my left knee. I'm putting all my weight on my right. Mm. You know, and that's by design, you know? Right. I see. So, that, so you're like, it's a right-sided saying that again, then you open up your left knee and then driving, right? Yes, yeah. So it didn't compress my knee in the way that it normally would, you know? Uh, but it takes really, really good awareness and knowledge of the throws to be able to protect your knees yeah. in the way that you know it hurts, right? So that, that takes a long time. You know? mm. It takes a really good teacher and a coach, and you have an understanding of all the different types. And uh, that's a tough one to do, but, you know, I'm freaking really great at this. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can personally attest to this. So, I mean, you know, I used to be like that guy, like, you know, stay in that game, I'll try 10 times. And then a couple of things that really helped was one is, uh, you know, yeah. setting it up really nicely. So I only use it now as a, like a finisher. Like I'll go through my chain of all the throws and then I know that I can really finish the seven because it's my Tokui Waza. Yeah. So I'll like do it only at the end. So I don't hit it as often. And another thing is the point about you, you it's, it's in one of your videos, but mm. opening up your hip. So I used to rely on my speed and then just drop underneath and then all my weight would be just like, boom, on my uh, goal would go on my knees. Yeah. It's a lot of impact. Mm. But then if you do the thing where Shin, that Shintaro talks about where you drop, but then immediately you shift your hips so that you can start running. Mm. If I found that it lessens the impact on your knees significantly. Yes, for you, sure. Yeah, because you're kind of like bouncing yeah. off the floor. Yeah. Instead of like putting all your weight on your knees and then stopping. Yeah. The yeah. worst is this. When you drop into your knees, like you just said, and the person's weight drops down yeah. on top of that. Yeah. That would mess your knee. Anyone knees up, right. really. Especially if you can't compress your knees all the way in flexion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which my knees can't do that. So if I drop to both knees with my ankles flat, and someone sprawls on me, I'm, mess I'm I'm really messed up. So I very much so pick and choose when I enter. 
and only enter with absolute certainty just so yeah. don't get caught in that sort of a situation. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So Most that... guys won't try to sprawl anyway. They try to sprawl outside in a way. So they're, you're not really trying to put all their weight on you. Right. You know, because then you're sort of underneath them and then you can get potentially run over, right? Yeah, yeah. If you just yeah. sprawl straight on, you can still get thrown. Yeah. yeah. And you know, you do something really good. Like you go right side versus left side, mm -hmm. high lefty Ponsenai or Sotogari into a drop lefty Ponsenai. Yeah. And what a freak combination that is. That <laughs> yeah, only I, I ever saw you do. I saw you know? how, yeah, made that happen. It was just yeah, like, but it works. And yeah. you know what? It works because right versus left, you're looking for that sleeve, you're looking for that sleeve. Yeah. No one, it, it's like a Ipon Senai Osoto hybrid that you go yeah. for, right? Yeah. Sometimes you go Ipon Senai first and then you switch Osoto yeah. and you're chopping at the knee and you know, you're pretty risky there, right? People get freaked out. <laughs> yeah. And then you go back to the drop Senai or run it. So like, yeah. It's a very difficult thing to do, you know? So you do a really good job. I'm telling you, I've never seen anyone do it. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, yeah. And that's a beauty, right? Yeah. A guy, you know, like you can fucking do it so good and then somebody copies it, somebody copies it, yeah. and eventually it's out it'll there, be, right? It'll be perfect, perfected even more, yeah. That's yeah. Beauty, yeah, but I've never seen anyone actually do that specific combination, you know? So, you know, you should be proud of it, you know? Yeah. Maybe there's a P2U system on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> have, I ever, have I ever done that? No. Hey. We try to do it, but I I didn't I didn't have any clue on how to describe it. So, I I did they we did a video on the one handed Tayotoshi. But wow, what, what is this? One of the randori videos we uh, uh you explained that, that I hit it on someone. I oh, dude, there's another Peter you out there. Did you know this? I, oh no, this I, this is you. Oh, this is you. <laughs> yeah, someone po posted a video of you doing uh. What are you doing, lefty pawns and that left tile? That's you. You posted that. No, this is not me. What? Liberty Bell 2013, fight one. Oh, that was a long time. That was a long time ago. Did you go over trying? Is this you? I can't even tell, man. Sometimes there's another Peter you on YouTube. Is it really? That's Judo, but it's not me. It's like he's older than me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a wonderful system, you know, and think of it this way, right? It's like the weak side of Ponce and Agi high. Yeah. Weak side of Soto off of Ipon Senai, which not a lot of people do. You know, Fonseca does it pretty good, you know? But he does it off of Sode, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you go back to the drop left and you run it perfect. You know exactly how to finish it, so. Yeah. That took a long time. I mean, it, you know, Shintaro, Shintaro showed me how to run it and that, it's a different feeling, like, because a lot of times you do kind of cheap by just like crunching down, but that's not what you want to do. Dude, is yeah. this you? Let's see, what did you send me? Peter I'm pretty Lee. sure it's the Oh, that is me. Who's hey. MFT you say? Who is that? I got pinned in this match. Oh, it's Mike to say. You know Mike to say? No. Yeah, he is a New Jersey Philly local guy that I used to train all the time together in college. Mm -hmm. I got over on the past here. Oh, there's oh wow, this is a good one. You just threw somebody drops in night. Wait, this one? Oh, wait, I... What happened there? Yeah, this is a, a good one. A triangle of him. <laughs> here's this. Here's another one that you didn't... It's got 64 views too, dude. I'm going to comment on it. <laughs> yeah, Peter. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. Back in the day. Oh, yeah. 2013. Wow. Yeah, this is KBI Judo. KBI Judo Super Fights. Remember that? Oh, man. Yep. There's a whole production. You don't do that anymore? I haven't done that in a while. One-handed Tatoshi. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there, there's some goodies of my old Serenaga videos on YouTube if you guys want to check it out. Not that it's any any good, but um, yeah. Heck, yeah. Anything else about Serenaga? No, I'm going down the rabbit. Oh, there's a Peter Judo. He's another Korean dude also. <laughs> oh, interestingly enough, he looks Korean. He's a behavioral scientist. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's a different the guy. Peter Yu. Different Peter Yu. I'm not a behavioral scientist. Man, if you're a Peter Yu, you're pretty nerdy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> kind of comes with the name, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, he's a judo guy? No, I'm not even looking at judo. All right, anyway. I oh, know it is judo. It's just Pete Judo. Oh, wow. He's a YouTuber, too. Oh, I you might have to collaborate. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway. 
Yeah, so the yeah, so thank you guys for listening. Very popular throw, Seminage, very yeah. versatile, highly yeah. effective. You see, if you watch a lot of the highlights, a lot of yeah. them are Seminages. And yeah, I'm going to give advice to the people who are listening. Yeah. Just doing Uchikomi and Nagakomi, it's not, not going to be enough for you to hit yeah. this in Rondori. There's yeah. a lot of nuance to this, setting it up, mm. finishing it properly, making it look like you're going for something else. You know, so you, you just have to watch my. <laughs> yeah that's all right. <laughs> he yeah. does go in depth with, uh, with yeah. all of this stuff so yeah check yep. please check it out yep all right uh that's about it for today and yep. uh we'll see you guys in the next episode